Each of us have things about ourselves that we would like to change. After you reach a certain age, this is a reality. Some of us feel that more deeply than others. And not simply are there things about ourselves that we would like to change, but there are things in our past that we would like to change. But one of the lessons that we are being taught in today's readings is to let go of the past. Now, this might seem odd, considering that we're Catholic, and so much of our faith is based on the past, on tradition, the sacred scriptures. The entire deposit of faith is something that is past from our perspective. However, I would suggest, as a footnote, that in our ritual celebration of the liturgy, in the solemn proclamation of the gospel, the readings, these things are no longer our past. They are our present. And hopefully, if we learn the lessons that are being taught to us through the sacred scriptures and the entire deposit of faith, they are also our future. But in order for this to be the case, we must learn to cut our ties with those things that weigh us down. Those things in our personal history that need to be healed, reconciled, and just simply forgiven. Because God is doing something new, as he says in the prophecy through Isaiah. Not only is he taking his hand and spreading apart the waters so that he will dry up the land so that the Israelites can pass through, so that they can escape Egypt, which has always been an image or a symbol of sin and darkness. But now he's going to take that dry land of the desert and give it life. Fill it with living waters. And this is an analogy for our souls. He clears away the chaos and then he fills it again with life. But in order to do this, we must participate with those saving actions of our Lord. And the way we do that is by conforming ourselves more and more to Christ and him crucified. And on the fifth Sunday of Advent, this is indeed something that we should consider. Because we're almost to Palm Sunday which means we're almost to Good Friday, almost to Easter. We're so close. Yet, in our hearts, how far away are we? How far away are we from that total conversion to Christ so that we can say with the Apostle Paul, that I count everything as rubbish. Even those undead specters in my life that chain me to the past. That cause me to hold grudges. That cause me to not have that mercy, kindness, and love that our Lord exemplifies in this gospel. Because what does it get us? This is the contradiction. Sometimes in our world today, and in our notions of justice, 
We believe that we must faithfully execute every single aspect of justice. Just like the people who bring the adulterous woman to our Lord. They're not doing something bad. Remember, we should be careful not to quickly make villains out of some of these people in Scripture. Now, we know Scripture tells us that they were trying to test him. We know that. But they're also trying to fulfill the law of Moses. They're trying to do specifically what our Lord has commanded them. In some ways, one could say they are nearly acting with good faith. And yet, what does our Lord do? He stands. And he offers instruction on this new thing that he's doing. He's no longer driving away the chaos by establishing justice. He's bringing life through mercy. And what does this get us? What does this get them? There is a twofold conversion that happens through our Lord's kindness and mercy. Not only are the accusers brought to a certain compunction and conversion of their own, they literally turn. They are converted. But so is the woman caught in adultery. Everyone in this story changes. Something happens to them in their encounter with our Lord's mercy, radical mercy. So we should ask ourselves, as we're reflecting on this passage, as we're reflecting on this lesson that our Lord is giving us, as we prepare ourselves for the coming celebration of Easter, who are we? Who are we in this story? Are you the accusers? Are you the adulterous woman? Or are you Christ? And who do you desire to be? If you find yourself falling short, because after all, The Christian life is about conforming ourselves more perfectly to Jesus. To being like him. If you find yourself falling short on this fifth Sunday of Lent, you have time. You can experience that mercy. You can turn your heart from a hard heart to one of kindness, mercy, generosity, and love. And when you experience that mercy, when you encounter it in the person of Christ and Him crucified, especially in the sacrament of confession, when you experience it, share it.